Good afternoon. Appreciate you being here with us. Um, just uh, want to start by saying really excited about uh, this week, uh, Old Oak and Bucket Week for our program, and huge, huge uh, game for all of our players, our fans, our university, and for our state. And so just uh, that's going to be the focus of everything that we do this week and getting our guys ready, um, getting guys that uh, have been out, trying to get as many of those guys back as we can and allow us to be able to, um, you know, be our very best in West Lafayette on Saturday. So do want to say this from the, from the game, I uh, do appreciate our young guys continuing to work their tails off in practice, just doing a great job for us. And, and defensive scout team player of the week was Andrew Turvey. Office of Scout Team Player of the Week was Zach Merrill and James Bamba. And then Special Team Scout was Sam Dockstrip. So just uh, guys continue to work hard. Uh, really proud of our guys coming back yesterday and, and uh, attacking the day. And obviously, you know, um, hurting and down and, and uh, you know, frustrated, but at the same time staying together. And, and uh, just thought, just talking to our strength staff, the way they attacked the weight room and everything that we're trying to do. So just want to finish strong and got one more week together for the 2021 season. And uh, it's been very challenging, obviously, all the things out there. But at the same time, special group of guys, appreciate them, love them, and want to finish strong with these guys and, and to do everything we can to, to keep the bucket. Questions? Uh, I guess to start, you mentioned you're trying to get guys back. I mean, uh, who is – Possible of getting back against the yeah, trying to uh, trying to get Taiwan Mullen back. So he uh, um, worked out over the weekend, and so we'll be practicing tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. We'll know more after that. Same with Stephen Carr, um, James Miller, those guys trying to get those guys back. Um, obviously, quarterbacks as well. You know, this is obviously our last week, so it's kind of <clears throat> either now or never in that regard. But uh, still working with those guys to see where they're at. Uh, also, uh, Josh Engwin had another one that uh, been working to get back. Those guys that uh, that I mentioned have all been critical parts of our team in the past and, and need, need to get them if we can at all possible. So they're working hard to do that with our training staff and strength staff and everybody involved. So um, other than that, uh, any specific guys you can feel free to ask about. But uh, uh, basically, you know, everybody that's been out trying to get them back and uh, um, some guys have continued to work and it doesn't look promising, but others it does. And so you just, uh, each individual guy is attacking it the best they can and Trying to get out there first team. Was it kind of odd? You know, last year's game obviously was canceled due to COVID, and you guys had tremendous momentum last mm -hmm. year. You didn't play. And this is the second straight one you're going to have to play on the road, too. Just the dynamic of that and not playing last year and, I guess, holding the bucket for two years, even though you only had one win out of that. Yeah, it was unique. There's no doubt. You know, you think about it, even last year. I mean, it seems so long ago uh, when leading up to that game, and uh, things started going south for both both programs with COVID, and uh, and then we tried to reschedule it. You know, the next week and didn't play it. And ended up not playing the game. So, uh, but uh, obviously, yeah, two years in a row we'll play the game at Purdue, and so uh, that's just you know reality of what's, what's happened. And and uh, um, but you know, bottom line is that's. Uh, that's where the game's going to be, so that's where we're going to show up and play. So, there you go. Tom, you and Jeff Brom came into coaching here about the same time. I mean, you guys passed across a lot, I'm sure, and you guys both have dealt with ups and downs and ebbs and flows. Uh, during the course of time, though, over the course of a year and such, like how often, A, do you run into them, or, or do, how much do you pay attention to what they're doing in regards to – real-time football and recruiting and such? Yeah, I, I would say probably the biggest thing that, that we um, overlap with is recruiting. You know, um, I don't physically get to see him that much, you know, out there. There's occasional, I guess, on the road you might because you get the contact period when the head coaches go out. But I ran to some of his assistants, you know, at different places as I was out here earlier this season as well. But I think recruiting is where they really keep a close eye on things and, and the guys that we're recruiting and the guys that they, you know, offer or take or whatever. We're always kind of having those discussions as a staff, just making sure we're, you know, seeing things and making sure we don't miss anybody, that kind of thing. So, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of respect. You know, like you said, we, we both uh, – have had our ups and downs the last few years, and, and uh, you know I've always uh, respected him a lot and, and reach out to him at different times, and and uh, they've done a great job this year. I know they had you know last year was what it was, and and different things before that, but uh, I'm just have always been somebody that uh, you know I respect guys that. 
do things the right way. And I think he's one of those guys. And he's a tough, hard-nosed guy and has works hard and good family guy. I respect that. And, and just the way that they, uh, their coaches, you know, handle things. And as we've got to know some of those guys, the ones that we maybe have known in the past, or maybe some that we didn't have gotten to know more. So there's mutual respect there, even though it's a huge rivalry and huge game for both programs. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's obviously an in-state team. You know, and every, not every program has in-state teams. You know, I've been a couple of places that have had that type of rivalry and it's very intense, but uh, sometimes it's, it's more ugly than others in those situations. But uh, I, I do think that there's a professionalism here between both universities, especially with the staffs in football. I know for sure that uh, there's just mutual respect. Coach, now we reached the end of the season. Uh, we've seen uh, Jacoby Hewitt enter the transfer portal. But of course, all, all teams are going to have that no matter what yeah. each year with that availability now. What is it that you actually try to do with this team to, to talk to them after the season, to, to the ones that are coming back uh, and the ones that are coming in? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was not a great season, obviously, yeah. and there's no getting around that. But sure. So you've got to have those conversations. How do they go? Well, first of all, open and honest, and uh, just from our guys on our team, you know, and, and like I said, it's a very unique dynamic, more so than ever, because a lot of guys have they're getting near the end, they've graduated and may have more years left. And so those just those discussions have 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 um, some have begun, some will become later after this weekend. And uh, just to be able to have a, an honest conversation about where they stand with us and, and uh, what they're thinking as well. But I think the biggest key is just open and honest, uh, you know, dialogue between both sides and and uh, to me it's about uh, making sure that we have the guys that uh, are all in here and want to be a part of this and want to help us uh, fight through the adversity we've experienced and help us uh, to um, get back to where we want to be you know obviously this has not been anywhere close to the season any of us expected or wanted but uh, here we are so we can't sit here and uh, you know make excuses or talk about this or that. It's about what are we doing to build for the future. And so that's all about the players that we attract to come here and those that choose to uh, either graduate and move on or just move on or however it works out for them. And so, like I said, my biggest thing is I want guys that fit with us and guys that want to be here. And uh, that's, the, that's the primary focus. And so that's about uh, finding guys that fit with us uh, that we would add to the team both either from high school or from, from a transfer situation, and finding guys that want to help us continue to build towards our goal of winning the Big Ten Championship. Coach, the finalist for the Buckus Award, uh, college football's best linebacker, came out this morning, and Micah McFadden was not among the six finalists. I was just wondering what you thought about that. Well, I think he's a great player, so I don't have any control of any of those the voting for those awards, um, but obviously he's a special, special player. Uh, he's developed tremendously here since he's been here. Um, awesome young man, great family, ton of respect for him. So he's uh, he's leader of our defense, one of the leaders of our team, and you see him play every every weekend. So I think there's no question he's one of the best linebackers in the country, and and uh, you know that's my opinion about him, and I think a lot of others feel the same way. So, but uh, those are those awards are what they are, and people vote for him, and, and that's fine. And and uh, but it's not always indicative of of an individual guy. But uh, you know. Much respect to the guys who are on that list, and uh, there are a lot of great players as well. So there's a lot of good players in this country. Defense was really solid early in the season, and then the back half of the season, giving up 38 to Maryland, 38 to Rutgers, 35 uh, this past weekend. Obviously, guys have, because of injuries, guys have had to play an awful lot of snaps yeah. that, that maybe they otherwise wouldn't have. As a defensive guy, I mean, do you look back? Or are you disappointed in them? Are you understanding about the kind of struggles that they've had? Just, just where? How do you approach that? Yeah, you know, to me, um, very proud of the guys that are still uh, battling every single day, that are still healthy to be able to be out there, uh, fight to stay out there. Uh, the depth has become a huge issue. I'm just going to call it what it is, uh, playing way too many snaps, and, and which has led to, to, to even later in the game, more fatigue, more mistakes, um, just kind of wearing down physically and mentally. And so uh, that to me has been been frustrating because I know how hard the guys are playing and how hard they work each week. So uh, it's been, uh, you know, an unfortunate set of circumstances. You know, you just go through and you look at our roster and where we're at right now based on how we started. And and there's no doubt. I mean, football is a numbers game. Always has been, always will be. That's why I have classes in high school sports. That's why they, you know, have different, you know, things working the way they are divisionally and how it works. And, and you know, when you have more guys that are bigger, faster, stronger, that, that can make plays, that's what you want, you know. And so, unfortunately, as this has kind of gotten near the end here, we've really gotten – decimated in some spots and it's really taking its toll you know, which is unfortunate but at the same time that's uh it's where we are so we got to fight through it and uh find ways to execute better in those critical times i thought there were some things even in the game this last week where you know third downs really just did not 
get off the field in some of those third and longs that we really needed to and, and sometimes with breakdowns and guys that are just, you know, once again, maybe playing that aren't quite ready to be playing yet, but they still have to be out there because of the situation we're in. And so that's that's it. So we got to do. We got to find a way to get those guys ready so they can execute. So, uh, but it's not for lack of effort, not for lack of preparation with our guys working hard. And so we're just trying to keep it, you know, in, in, as simple as we can so those younger guys can still execute and, and make plays and, and try to get some of those older guys off the field a little bit, you know, in earlier in the game and not have them play every single snap. So, but that's, that's where we are. And uh, yeah, it has been frustrating because I know it's a special group of guys that, that I think have We've got a lot of good players in there, and and, and I know that they uh, that they're frustrated as well. So, but the, the key is they're going to battle this week, and work it really hard, and try to find a way to maybe get some of these guys back. Even a guy or two would help. It'd be huge to be able to help us in that area, especially in the secondary, and then just some, some depth at linebacker. So, but uh, just trying to continue to do everything we can to to fight through everything we're going through and help our guys uh, have one more shot to play together and do something special. Just asking about a little bit more about Grant because he's a, a local guy for us. But from from your perspective, and I know walk-ons have different kind of journeys to not just joining the program, but you know, kind of how they develop within the program. Some stay for a whole career, some decide only for a couple of years. What was, from your perspective, kind of his path to you guys out of high school, and how have you seen him kind of, I guess, just kind of keep growing into what you ask of a walk-on quarterback in particular? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and really, you know. Grant's a really special guy, you know, comes from a good family and, and uh, Noblesville High School here in Indiana and, uh, you know, just his high school coach um, and other coaches from that area that recommended him to us was really kind of how it all started and other individuals that have worked with him you know, as a quarterback. And uh, uh, you come here and we actually have three quarterbacks in that group of guys that came in here together. And, uh, you know, he, he may not have necessarily been the, top, been the top of that group even when he first got here. But I tell you what, he, of all of our walk-ons that we've had here, um, he may have his improved the most, you know, and, and just really bought in. Uh, just a tough kid, works hard, uh, attention to detail. He's very smart, uh, excellent student. You know, he's, he's what you want in a walk-on in regards to he does everything right. On the field, he does everything right. Off the field, and he's where he's supposed to be on time, Always there, smart, tough, dependable, and a guy that you know is going to represent your program in a first-class way in everything that he does. Because here's the reality: if if a young man you know, is on our roster and he does something with poor judgment off the field, you know they don't give his bio and say no. They say Indiana football player so and so, and that's how you're labeled, you know. And that's just the way it is. And so whether you play or don't play, you're a part of this football team. And so we got to make sure that everybody, all 130 guys are doing things the right way and, and representing our program in a first-class way. He's one of those guys that you never worry about that with him, that he always does the right thing. And so uh, it's just been awesome to see him be rewarded for that. And he's gotten better and better every single week, gotten better every year he's been here, you, even his, just his reads and his understanding of the offense. Even as you've watched him play so far, and the, the times he has played, he's just very calm and very um, just uh, poised and just sits back there and just does his job, you know. So um, that's, uh, that's where he's at. And uh, I know that uh, he's, you know, very excited about the opportunity he's been given to get a chance to play and uh, taking advantage of it. So just really proud of Grant and uh, the person that he is, first and foremost, but now the fact that he's out there making plays and, and uh, going to do what he can to help us, you know, get a win. So obviously after Saturday you weren't thrilled with – the offense in general, the more or less lack of a passing game, I guess, just what did you, when you had a chance to reevaluate, reconsider it, just what more did you sort of find? What, what more did you see in terms of why some uh, you know, RPOs became runs when you thought they should be mm -hmm. passes? I mean, what were some of your grand Yeah, I think a lot, you know, a lot of those to me were, um, you know, just quarterback making decision to, to run it rather than throw it, you know, whether or not it was the right decision or not. You go through and say, okay, this is how we would say, the next time we do this, this is the decision we think you should make. So a lot, a lot of times there were decisions to tuck it and run it, you know. And so, and I, and I think that that's where we got to grow in that, that confidence to throw the football, you know. And you got to throw the football. And you have, yes, there's no doubt you want to put the defense in conflict and make them have to give us the proper read. And we got to make the proper read. And when you give a player the chance to make that read, you, know, you can't, you know, just, you know, come down and say, hey, this is a, you know, you, you got to give them that freedom to make that read, right? So, uh, but we got to make some better reads, you know, we got to be able to know when to throw it, when not to throw it, when to run it, when to throw it. So those are just 
growth process we go through. And so we're just kind of trying to do everything we can to, but you know, I know, we all know we got to throw the football, you know? And so that's to me a big part of this. And so we got to be able to get better at that this week and work hard on that. And like I said, we've done a lot of good things in practice with that, uh, but it has to transfer to the game. And it didn't do that on Saturday, probably the, the least it has, you know, with Donovan since he's been playing. And so we got to improve in that. And that's just a constant, every, every, to me every day is valuable for him, every meeting, every rep, every practice rep, every mental rep, everything we do to get him to continue to develop as a quarterback in this program. And that's the ultimate goal is to be able to, every time he, you know, does what he does, every every season that he's in, whether it's the spring season, the off season, the you know, during the season, that it's growth, continual growth. And I know it's not always like this, it's never like that, but uh, you gotta be able to have that trajectory moving in the, in the right direction. So to me, that's teaching from that, it's, it's film, it's going through, and I said in those meetings with him, going over those decision-making things that happen in the game, try to help make better ones next week and that's the whole goal so it's it's a uh, he's young and and we got to find a way as a staff to to make it as simple as possible to help him be successful on game day so i'm dismissing the depth issues at quarterback and running back because that's just been an, an anomaly this year but in regards to the depth issues on defense i'm i'm kind of curious when you talk about that now because it seemed like in the summer and in fall camp that you kind of felt like you had enough depth at all three levels on defense, but that certainly hasn't shown during the course of the season that you did. Uh, a, has that surprised you? And B, what's the reason for why uh, that, that next group hasn't really played as well as you would have hoped this year? Well, there's, you know, I think that's a, a fair question. And I, I feel like that some, some key guys um, early in the season um, have been injured. You know, um, if you look at our secondary, uh, we've lost some guys, um, even even some young guys that, that were expected to be playing, either missed part of fall camp or got hurt early in the year and, you know, lost some of those guys for the rest of the season. You know, I know Josh is not really, he, he played early and we got, Monster got hurt the first few snaps of the, of the Iowa game and then Josh goes in there and he plays and now he gets injured. And so they've kind of been tag teaming back and forth. We have not kept both of them at that position uh, like you wanted them to be able to go. And and I think you go back and you look at the corner position and, and we got guys there and then Chris was starting to play and then he tears his ACL. Uh, Taiwan and Dries were injured most of the season. Um, and linebacker, you know, Thomas goes down and then James goes down and, and uh, you know, you got two guys that played a lot of football for us and, and really didn't play, you know, and I know with Thomas's hip, you know, we were trying to get him to where he could at least give us some snaps during games. And, and, uh, um, and then James, you know, has been up and down and then he got injured. So it's just, it hasn't, you kind of feel like if you, you think, you know, each position had at least another guy or two you felt good about. And then, you know, I thought Jonathan Haynes would come in here and help us. And then he got injured, you know, um, after he got injured during fall camp. And so then he, so it's just, it's kind of been, you know, in all those spots, we just haven't been able to have the, you know, consistent guys being there together. When one guy was healthy, the other guy was out, and vice versa. And then even you know with James, you know James Head, you know he actually got hurt in the off season, and then he finally came back actually sooner than we thought he was going to come back. And so that was that was not what we were expecting from him. And so it's just kind of been one of those years, you know, and so, but, and I do think these younger guys have got to, you know, continue that you have a group of guys that play a lot of football in front of them. And uh, to me, those other guys have got to continue to grow and develop, you know, and that's why it's, uh, you know, I always think about, you know, um, just different players, you know, that have come through here at different positions and some guys really elevate, you know, when an older guy leaves and they have that whole off season. And, and so that's what you have to have happen for some of these guys. But, but I feel like that, that it's kind of just been, different spots where guys that we were expecting to be a good solid number two and you feel like you got a good number two and then something happens to him or something happens to the first guy so he becomes the one and then the other guy has to elevate and so uh, it's just uh, hasn't for whatever reason been able to stay consistent I know a year ago we were you know able, we were stayed pretty healthy you know even though we had the COVID situation going on and that was challenging with who was there and who was out but we didn't even then did not lose a lot of those guys you know for long periods of time if it happened to be a case so uh, but it uh, you know on that side of the ball it's been um, you know a frustrating thing to be able to not keep our guys um, with us each and every week and, and and doing some new things as well on that side of the ball and then when they're out they're not getting all those reps too I think that's kind of had a cumulative effect in a negative way which has hurt us and then you just got to be able to you know when those guys are here, you got to get them ready. So that's, you know, 
I know I've kind of gave him a long answer to that, but but it was kind of like because I, I kind of had the same like going through each position and different things, and you know you just gotta. We get to, what we're gonna have to do is we go through and we talk about this already and get ready here these, when the season ends is just back and just kind of re you know rebuild each room and try to be able to go through and look at it that way and and be able to maximize our guys and who we have and who's coming back and and be able to address the needs accordingly. So, but uh, that's the challenge and the opportunity they have in front of us. Saturday, I asked you about uh, Grant. That he just looked comfortable out there when he was playing, and then afterwards, in uh, on the field when we were talking to him, someone asked him about pressure, and he says, "Pressure's not real. He doesn't believe in it." Which that's there's the reason why he's so calm out hmm. there. And you talk about the need for passing that that in the offense that you have to have that in order to win. Is the odds that we're going to see a lot more of Grant Gremmel this week than not? Or is there a possibility that he starts this game because his passing has – he's been the only passer here of late that can get to the job done? Yeah, uh, as I said, you know, I think afterwards, you know, all options are open, you know, and we start practicing. You know, we had our, our – uh, uh, we have like a walkthrough, do some things uh, individually on Sunday nights, but our really first practice for the week will be tomorrow with today being our off day. And so, yeah, that's uh, – yeah. He's definitely going to be in there getting lots of reps, and we'll see. As the, as the week plays on, we'll see how you know, who's healthy and then who's also able to go. And, and obviously, he's going to get a lot of reps. And uh, I liked what I saw um, on Saturday, for sure. Yeah, um, it seems like uh, every year Jeff Brom throws in a quarterback. He's thrown for 340 yards this year. He is O'Connell. But uh, just their passing offense in general, what makes it so difficult uh, to stop? And what is that challenge going to be like? Uh, certainly with your, your secondary being bagged up. Yeah, so they've got, uh, you know, really talented quarterback. You know, I know he went there, Connell went there as a walk-on and and uh, um, really has been impressive, you know, and I know he's had his ups and downs too and he's been the starter and he's not the starter and they have different guys that have played, but but at the end of the day, you know, he's he's been the consistent guy and, and he's really played well as of late. And uh, they got a lot of talented receivers, you know, and they got some good tight ends and, and uh, they, they get the ball out fast enough and, and do enough things with that to not to take some stress off their offensive line. Uh, they've, you know, They've not been known for their running game. They're known for their passing game, and they're one of the top passing teams in the country right now. And so, but I think it's a combination of, you know, just they do a great job schematically and got a really good system that they use. And, and then they, you know, they stress you. They stress you vertically. They stress you horizontally. They stress you intermediately. And uh, a lot of different concepts that they use to make you have to really defend a lot of the field and do a good job with that. And like I said, and do it in a way to be able to create enough time for their quarterbacks to, to throw, you know, so they haven't given up, uh, you know, and there's been a couple games have stuck out where they've given up some sacks, but overall they really haven't consistently, you know, so, but that, and I think it goes back to how quickly the, the, the quarterback gets rid of it. So, but uh, yeah, he's just, uh, does a really good job with that, and that's something that when you play these guys, you know you have to defend the pass extremely well. But uh, as is always the case, you can't let them run the football, and that's 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 priority number one. But uh, which is the, the case every single week for us. But uh, um, I just know that uh, they throw it well, and we got to be able to have you know a lot of different variations to be able to to have answers for that. I guess kind of a, a follow up, more conceptually, on, on talking about Donovan and, and maybe sort of his struggles Saturday kind of understanding when to run, when to pass, having confidence in, in mm -hmm. both his decision making and maybe just the the act of passing the football. I mean, with a young quarterback especially, is there a lot you can do with him, I guess, on the sideline when you're seeing that happen? Or is it is it one where maybe you need to get him more to the controlled environment of a film room and sort of let him work through more slowly and, and not quite maybe the relentless nature of a game? Okay, this is what I, I missed seeing mm -hmm. here and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it, it – you know, the learning process of, of figuring out, you know, what mistake I made, how can I best process how to learn from it and, and get all that. It probably happens in the classroom, you know, in the meeting room, and, and uh, which is what we do, you know, the day after the game and, and then days even after that to be able to teach and grow and learn. So, I mean, there's obviously, you know, even during the game, you're trying to talk through things and be able to, you know, if a guy makes a mistake, get him calmed down, get him on the board, talk it through him, show him what they're going to see, show him what they saw, have them tell you. The big thing to me is having them tell you what they saw. And that tells you a lot, you know, about, you know, are they seeing things that they need to be seeing? Are they seeing, we talk about seeing ghosts out there. Are they seeing things that aren't really there and they get spooked and, and, and thinking that it was this coverage and it was really that coverage and that kind of thing. So that's a big part of it. And that can tell you kind of where a guy's at, 
you know, mentally and in his growth. And there's no question that there's a, a lot, a lot there for him to, to learn and grow through. And, and, but even with, with him out there when he's playing, you know, this week, we got to throw the football with him, you know, and that's, he knows that we know that we know we want to do that and he needs to do that. And he does it, you know, well in practice and needs to be, do it well in the game, you know, and I know he can and, and, but we got to get to that point where that's happening consistently on Saturdays, you know, cause that's really all that matters. Nobody, nobody cares about what you do in practice, you know, so uh, other than just the coaches and our preparation for all that. But bottom line is, is that we got transfer what's going on on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, watch you on Friday to, to game day performance on Saturday. Awesome. Have a great day. Elio.